It's really heavy. It's a, it's a lot of coal. Looks kind of pretty. Hey, I'm Nidge, and this is a picture of me doing a handstand in a really dark room. <laughs> okay, so I love electricity. In fact, I love it so much that I travel the country talking about it. I even make people pretend to be magnets and other people pretend to be coils. Cool, yeah? Every day, the average Australian burns about this much coal for their domestic electricity use. For all of Australia, that's more than 10,000 Olympic swimming pools filled with coal every year. But new technologies are being created that claim to be able to make power really cheap and almost limitless. To celebrate that, here are the five things I think we need to know about renewable energy. <laughs> First up, let's check out how we make electricity today. It's a fact of our universe that when you put a magnet through a coil, you can make electricity flow around the coil. But if you do it with a really strong magnet like this one and move it through lots and lots and lots of coil, you can light up a little light bulb. So this is a homemade job, but if you do it smart and make the magnets turn in the coils instead of moving in and out. And this is how we do it. 70% of Australia's electricity comes from burning coal under some water to make steam which rises and turns magnets inside coils. But there are other ways of generating electricity. In 2016, a team of scientists from the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta developed this, a wearable material that generates electricity from sunlight and movement. They say you could turn it into a t-shirt and produce enough electricity on the go to power small electronic devices. I want one of those tees or a mobile phone case that converts the ambient radio frequencies around us into power. The US team that developed it says you can boost your phone charge by up to 30%. Or well, my favourite, urine. No, I'm not taking the piss. In 2017, UK researchers at the universities of Bath and West England developed microbial fuel cells in which microbes feed on organic matter like pee, which fuels their growth and generates enough pee electricity to power a light bulb. Okay, I know what you're thinking. The phone and the T and the P are all very clever, but how are we gonna power a huge continent like Australia on those? Well, we can't yet, but there are other technologies that are pretty good. Solar panels and wind turbines. 1.6 million homes in Australia have solar panels on their roof, the highest uptake in anywhere in the world. And last year, South Australia got more than 50% of its electricity from wind and solar. But there's a problem. What happens when the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow? Where's the electricity gonna come from then? Well, that's when you're going to need one of these. The batteries in our cars work on the chemical reaction between lead, sulfuric acid and lead oxide to form water and lead sulphate plus a little bit of electricity. The great thing is that the same thing happens in reverse. So we can start with these guys, put in some electricity, and then you can get back the products that you started with, recharging the battery. But we can perform similar magic with other chemicals like zinc bromide, nickel hydride, or with metals like lithium, which is 20 times lighter than lead, but packs the same electrical punch. But one of the coolest chemicals we can store energy with is... Water. Pumped hydro systems store electricity by pumping water up a hill when we don't need it and then letting it flow back down a hill through a turbine when we do need it. <laughs> Australian scientists reckon this technology could one day make Australia the world's biggest exporter of renewable energy. And I'm going to talk to one of the main researchers behind it. What's so game changing about pumping water up a hill? There's no game changing in the sense that the technology is 100 years old. Uh, there's not a lot to invent. There's about 160 or 70,000 megawatts of pumped hydro capacity around the world. Uh, it's 97% of all storage for the electricity industry around the world. It's by far the cheapest way of storing substantial amounts of energy. Thanks, that's what's happening in South Australia, right? I think that's, they're experiencing that now and then they're looking towards pumped hydro technologies and batteries. That's right, South Australia is now at about 50%. Tasmania, of course, is already at 100% with traditional hydroelectricity, but um, several states, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, will get there in the 2025-2030 timeframe. How do you see the future of Australian electricity? In Australia, the only uh, electricity systems that are being built now are wind and solar photovoltaics. 
and I expect that over the next five years, PV and wind will push up into the 100 gigawatt per year and more installed each year, and coal will fall and fall and fall. It really is game over. Wind and solar photovoltaics are the outright winners, far ahead of uh, gas and new gas and coal. Increasing the supply of electricity doesn't have to be the only solution. So too can decreasing the demand. What is a virtual power plant? A virtual power plant is kind of like a regular power plant in the sense that a regular power plant, its job is to um, produce enough power to help balance supply and demand. A virtual power plant does the same thing, except it's a whole bunch of individual devices which are tied together to create the same effect. What are those devices and how could they fit into a virtual power plant? So the devices that can fit into a virtual power plant um, are really enabled by this concept of the Internet of Things. Because of cheap cloud computing and great comms technology, we can talk to almost anything. So all of a sudden, you've got a device in your home or in your business that is cloud enabled. So now people can make you an offer to use that when you're not using it. Kind of like ride sharing. So you know, where you've got a car at home, if you're not using it, then somebody can pay you to borrow your car when you don't need it. How big do you see virtual power plants getting? Massive, absolutely massive. Because we've got two choices, right? As a as an industry, as a as a culture, you know, what are we gonna do? We can keep on building more and more power plants, or we can be much more efficient about how we use it. With a combination of megawatts, megawatts, big storage, and all the new alternative energy technologies, it's an exciting future. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.